I'm here. My name is Bradley Young, and welcome to this Gift Wrapped Audio Outreach Community Podcasting Workshop in conjunction with the Civil Society Consulting Coffee Club. And I'm going to sound like Chris Whitty at times because um, I'll be asking Mark to flick on um, as we're going to go through some slides. Um, I'm with my colleague Sam, uh, and I'll introduce you in a second. Uh, but in, in this little session, it'll be split into four parts. We're going to introduce ourselves and talk about the general differences between radio and podcasting and how we can work for uh, small groups working with uh, smaller communities and so on. I'll give you the case study of the Horinger podcast, and then Sam uh, will take you through hopefully a brilliant demonstration of how you can uh, create your own sound files and so on um, using Audacity, which is a free software. Uh, and that's the whole idea behind this. But anyway, as I say, I'll, we'll introduce ourselves. So who are we? I am Bradley Young. I'm a podcaster, radio host, and I'm a retired English teacher. While my colleague, Sam, over to you, Sam. Well, hi, uh, as Brad says, my name is Sam. I am a audio engineer, former uh, radio technician. Uh, so I used to work in community radio. Uh, I ended up uh, working for IO Radio, which was part of Ipswich Community Media. We and we aim to get more people voice more people's voices into radio, giving them a chance to explore what it is they were passionate about, giving them their voices. And yeah, I ended up building the studios for them, training the new DJs, producing with them. And yeah, that's how I met Brad. Uh, he came to us with his uh, show an idea for his radio show and i'm so sorry i did this to you brad yes it's okay sam thank you very much but if, if we look at that um bottom bullet point there what sam and i have done during the last six months uh, as we finally got together after a bit of a break after covid is we came up with this idea of um audio outreach and the idea is that we will enable you we want to work with you to give you a voice and the people you work with and work for give them the voice uh, a platform to share their stories and cr I think really crucially during the current climate, the cheaper, uh, the better, uh, preferably free, but certainly if not low cost software. And that's what we use. And that's what today is all about. And it comes back to Mark's idea of our steps to sustainability, this idea of building capacity that in some ways we can work with you, either training or producing for you uh, to allow you to get your messages out in, in a more efficient way um, and a more flexible way as well, and, and, and a speedy way too. Um, so we're going to move on to the first part of the um, of, of the talk, and it's basically a, a simple sort of a, almost like a lecture, really. How are radio and podcasting related, and are they related at all? So Sam, um, I think if you can click again, Mark, I think uh, there's uh, there's a bit of text under there. There we are. Remember, it's um, to be in charge of the program. So, Sam, with your radio head on, uh, do you want to pick up and develop on that phrase? So, like I was saying, uh, I have a, I've spent a fair amount of years within uh, the radio community within Suffolk, uh, working within community radio, working alongside BBC Radio Suffolk and getting to meet a lot of people around here. And if there's one thing I can say at this point is radio is a format which speaks to a lot of people and in a lot of complex ways but the thing is is radio is incredibly diverse in what it presents you can listen to music Hi. people are talking hello the the news just about anything um yeah thought thought that was the next line uh radio as a format a, it's, we're going to talk in a moment a, li a little about how radio has just a few differences uh, from podcasting, but importantly is it's going to be something we're expecting to listen to. We, we have something which you can tune in and just listen to in your car on the fly. Um, Brad, back to you on podcasting. Yeah. Um, because one of the things you might remember, you might remember the great, the late great Anthony Wedgwood Ben, and he described uh, the early years of radio as, as, as wallpaper that was just in the background. And, and he was anti radio at the time, but actually he had a kind of point podcasting much more personal. 
much more direct. And one of the other things is, as, as this will develop over the next 10 minutes or so, is you control it a lot more as well. It is people talking, having a conversation about their niche, their subjects, but also crucially, you can choose what you listen to. Um, and I think we're going to go on to the next slide now. And if we will break down some of the fundamental differences between radio and podcasting. And of course, obviously the focus on today is to really sort of encourage you to think about maybe uh, using podcasting yourself because radio is not always accessible. You can't always get into a radio studio. You've got to wait to be invited on and so on. So Sam's going to take you through the, the left-hand column on radio, uh, <laughs> what radio offers people, and I'm going to pick up the podcasting column. So over to you, Sam. So, Yes, Brad is absolutely right in saying that if you were trying to get on the radio, it is not exactly accessible for you. You would have to be emailing your local radio station, hope that there's a show in particular you'd be able to talk to and present your story to. Um, but that doesn't exclude you from making your own radio shows if that's the sort of thing you're after. But well, one of the things I like to personally hark on when we're talking about the difference between radio, podcasting, and any kind of audio product is radio, you play music. You have paid well, for a license to put it out onto your website or onto your FM radio station, which is its a whole host of complex things. Um but you can tune into a single station and you may be able to hear music associated with that. Like if we turn on classic FM, we all know what we're getting from that. Um, and that's what we mean by generalized or idealized audience is you tune into BBC radio Four, you're in for the talk content. It's going to be specific to the BBC's uh, programming ske schedule and yeah, uh, Kirsty in the chat saying, uh, never thought to compare radio to podcasting, but if when you start breaking these shows down and we start comparing it to podcasting, you're going to see that there, there is a fundamental skill set which is transferable between the two. And that's fantastic because we can talk about presentation skills, we can talk about editing and we can use the language of radio in podcasting to kind of bring a more generalized and idealized audience. Um, but the thing is, is if you're producing radio, you have to be very strict on your timing. You have to be very formal in your structure. And this is generally because you're trying to broadcast it out on a specific time and venue. And ultimately what that leads to is what we've called the inactive listening experience. Come on, you come on. Jo you join, uh, you tune into your radio. It is in your car, on your computer, however you digest that kind of show. You're generally not going to be putting it on because you're going, this is the show I want at this time. And that is one of the downsides to trying to format your message that way. And that is why, Brad, podcasting does have a lot more options for you, particularly in the accessibility uh, venue. Um, Absolutely right. right. Um, and of course, as we're going to go on to later, it can be free as well. Um, so I'm on the right-hand column. And um, because podcasting has a predominantly talk-based uh, you know, fundamental base to it to, to its content. Yeah, it's, it's Sam's right. When you put down, there's no need for licenses. We, one of our pre-production questions when dealing with you in future would be: if you want music, then you have to think about the legal side and performing rights. That's something that's part of our pre-production when we discuss things. But there are fewer regulations with podcasting. It can be controversial, as you're probably aware of, with some sort of podcasting podcasting in America and so on. Um, because there are fewer limits and there's no off offcom, so you're not really tied down. At the moment, there's no offcom, so uh, uh, you're not really tied down to things. There are more platforms to upload to. You're aware of that. Well, of course, radio stations use platforms too, but you're doing it from the outset. You know, with, with the radio station, they have to put the content out on the station first and then do it later on. Certainly, the audience. I will I will bang on about that a lot uh, in this session. It's specific to your subject audience, what you want to produce. 
And while you might have a, you know, this is not the BBC, while you have might have a smaller audience, the impact is quite dramatic. And uh, I'm going to draw, a, um, I'll give you an example now. That Earlier in the year, we worked with Nazreen from Awakening Minds, who Mark knows really well. And we were able to put together a little 30-second clip for her, whereby she wanted to promote an event that was coming up, and she was really struggling to get the message out. Uh, and she needed also to speak uh, in Pashtun, if my memory serves me right. So she gave us a little recording on her phone, she recommended some music she liked, and we were able to supply that with her. And we were able to send back a 30-second clip in 20 minutes. And the following week, she had 83 people turn up to, a, to an event she didn't expect anyone to turn up to at all because it got out to the right audience in the right way and word of mouth took over as well. And she was delighted with the response. Likewise, it's a looser format. It's, you know, you, you are a lot more flexible. You can make mistakes in podcasts because it's almost like a personal thing between you and your, your individual listener because it's very much a one-to-one. -one. And of course, you can bring in online recordings and so on. But it comes back to Sam's point earlier about the difference between an, an active listener and an inactive listener. And podcasting, you choose. You want to be there. You're part of that group. You're part of that community. It's a topic that's interested you. So you're already coming um, with 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 a with a mindset that's tuned in to, to whatever you, you're going to uh, talk about. So there's often a sharper and a more direct engagement and a better audience interaction. So podcasting, um, certainly the free ones that we're suggesting today, um, you can be quite flexible in setting them up, but once you've got your audience, uh, and once you once you know um, uh, two key questions about aim and audience you really can create quite a significant impact uh, within the group you're addressing. So on that point, I'm going to go on to the next slide. <clears throat> Sam's bit is coming up fairly soon, so I'll be taking, I'm going to be taking over for a little while now, and Sam's got to prepare something for you. Um, what is community podcasting? And I'm going to briefly talk about my experience in the last 12 months with the Horinger podcast as a case study. So community podcasting is not a podcast community. We'll start with that straight away. The community podcasting group, they create content for the community, but their community, that's you. You've got messages that you want to get out to people. Uh, and how do you do it? And the podcast is the way you do it. People who uh, just talk about podcasting as a hobby, that's a podcast community. I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about this case study, uh, which I've, I've tracked throughout the year as well. And it's, it's my own podcast, the Horinger podcast, because I decided 12 months ago that I want to do that for the village I live in. And now one of the caveats straight on is the village I live in is quite general, quite vague. The, the podcast itself was never going to be an issues podcast. It was about life in a village, and it was designed initially to, pre, um, to promote local politics, politics. Uh, the parish council and all the good community groups, the choirs and the yoga classes and so on. And really I was struggling after that. I didn't really know where it was going to go. And so I had that aim of those two strands. That's, that was the second bullet point, but who was it for? And I began to speak to people in the village and said, look, I wouldn't like to do this. There's a lot going on in our village. We've got a village of a thousand people. Uh, I looked at the demographics, 10% are under 18, 55% are over 55. So I kind of knew the age range. And the one thing they all came back to me and said is, you know, we, we like the idea of the, um, uh, the local politics. and uh, We like the idea of the community groups. We want the oral history. We want the stories about our village. There are people who are passing on who've lived here for three or four or five generations. And we want that human interest story. And I hadn't thought about that. And it's a really powerful tool for getting messages across. So while you might have, and you'll hear me say this again later on, while you might have a really important set of facts you want to get across, actually, if you can bring in the human interest, somebody who's either suffered or struggled or has a great story or a positive one, use it. And it changes the dynamics of a podcast very quickly to become something quite um Oh, certainly impressionable yeah intimate and so we launched and just before we launched i realized from my community radio days uh, so thanks to sam that i also had the skills through audacity to create little sort of mini adverts with a sound effect and, and a commentary over it just saying you know on tuesday the choir meet every tuesday for the the, the 
their choir practice and so on, and the sound of a choir in the background. And suddenly we had something that began to sound and feel like a sort of commercial radio because we had these uh, Molly Radio 4. We had um, interviews with people on various issues and we were mixing in with these other these other little adverts as well. And so um, the podcast took off and it's been running for 12 months now. We do keep, it's changed over time subtly because more and more people have come on. We've had local people hosting it, getting involved. We had Jess, and we'll remember, we had a GCSE student work with us during the summer. Uh, we've also been able to, um, and I'll talk about the difference between proactive and reactive later on. We were able to set up a campaign in the summer to do a traffic. And we've had, since June, when we started checking the metrics and we were given the information, we've had nearly two, or over 2,000 uh, listens on our specific site. We get a regular 300 insights from another site. And what I was worried about in the summer uh, is that I, I, I didn't think that I thought the numbers were flattening. You know, they weren't maybe as good as I was hoped. And then I found out that actually our local community council have a web page and they were downloading the podcast. They don't keep the metrics, but everybody was going there. And so we, we feel that we, we feel that fairly accurately, we've had about 5,000 engagements this year. We feel fairly confident that that number is accurate. And we've begun to see very clearly that, um, for the first time ever, social events were sold out. And I'll show you at the end, we got some positive comments and I keep the positive comments, how we are having an impact, a supportive impact on a number of community events in the village. So it's been a very good experience. Uh, we put it out fortnightly, uh, the full podcast with interviews and the inter interim weeks, we put out a little diary dates, so those little adverts. And that's another key thing. Regularity and consistency is also important as well. And so those are the things I've also learned throughout the year in creating a podcast, which takes me, I'm retired, I do have the time, um, but now I've set up a bank of work as well. It takes me about an hour and a half, to two hours in a week to set up the podcast the full one, and it takes me about 20 minutes to set up the diary dates. So now it's rolling. It's actually having a double impact as well. And people are saying, are you going to carry on with it next year, which is the aim. Um, so that's the sort of case study. If we could go on to the next slide, please, because I really want to engage uh, you now um, uh, 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 as you listen to what we're doing. Um, I want to really get into what are the steps to making a free podcast. Now, you'll see one of the alterations. I've, Sam doesn't know this. I've actually put pre-production. Um, there are three stages. Pre-production, that is key. That's the meetings where you chat about what you want to do. Then production, which is Sam's, and then editing, which is something Sam deals with as well. But I've put in brackets there. Um, you'll see pre-production. I've put in warm rooms this winter. I was casting around this morning, and I just thought, well, let, let's actually apply this to a real-life situation. So warm rooms this winter. Um it's an issue. It's already December. So, we're, you know, let's say somebody has come to us and said, well, we've got uh, the local council are opening up three new venues for warm rooms this winter. And, you know, people in your community need to know about this. And the first two questions that Sam and myself will always ask are the aims. What are you wishing to achieve with this podcast? What is it you want to do? OK, with the topic of warm rooms this winter, I imagine straight away a number of you would already be writing down, well, we need to tell people who, what, when, where, why. Well, we'll come to that in a second, yeah? They need to know the facts. Uh, maybe they also need to know who's going to be there. Will they be supported in some way? Will there be someone online who can speak uh, an alternative language? Will there be food there and so on? So you might be needed to bring those things in. So the aims, what are you wishing to achieve? It's a really key question. You can't answer that this morning, but if we use that example of warm rooms this winter, you can see very it'll sharpen up your thinking straight away. And the second one, for me, which is always the key one as well, who is this for? Who are we actually aiming this for? When I was a teacher, I used to do audience. Um, uh, and I would always say, draw a clock and have zero at the bottom, 70 at the top, and just go up, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And those are your ages. And then divide it on a kind of gender lines or something like that. But think of age, gender, ethnicity. Who are you aiming this for? for and that will change the way you approach things if you're suddenly aiming at uh, a group of 10 to 15 year olds 
and you're talking about warm rooms this winter, you're going to speak in an entirely different way to a group of 55 to 60 year olds. Your your address will change, your language will change and so on. So <clears> audience <throat> is very key. This is how you address people. Um, and that's the first steps in making a free podcast. That's obviously free, but you would either do it yourself or you sit with us. And the next slide, if I can go on to the next one, please, Mark, which is the content, yeah, which is pretty much like the aims, but it is what is the subject? I'll stay with warm rooms this winter. Divide it. What does your listener need to know? And that's always going to be the facts, the who, what, when, where, why. Warm rooms this winter, who is it run by? The local authority. Where? At the local village hall. When? Uh, every Tuesday or whenever. Where? At such and such. You, you give them the five W's, and that that's non-negotiable. If, if you're talking about working with your community, you've given them the facts they need to know. That's what they need to know. But what do they want to know? That comes back to what I learned from the people when I was starting the Horinger podcast. They wanted to know other things as well. And they might want those that softer information. Are they going to be greeted when they get there? Is there, a, is there access for people with a disability? Uh, are they going to, is there going to be food there and so on? And so what your listener wants to know, you need to be thinking about as well. So that's if you're producing maybe a short announcement or maybe a, a quick podcast is very factual for some news to just come out. Um, if you're thinking of something a bit more detailed, then you've got to start using your contacts as well. So who do you know in these fields that can give you extra information? Would they be the kind of people who you'd like to interview? And again, Sam will talk to you by using the phone for that uh, as a free way of interviewing people. And that allows you to vary the voices so you're not a talking head. You actually create an entertaining podcast for yourself. And I really should have swapped those two bullet points around because what I've just been talking about is reactive content. In other words, you've just had some information and you want to put something out fairly quickly. And you can do that, as Nazreen did in, in the summer, and you could put out a 30-second clip that could just go onto WhatsApp or you, know, you could send it to people via email. They could play the clip and it'll give them very basic, clear information. But you might also be thinking ahead about what you want to do longer term. And that's proactive content where you start looking ahead. Um, it would have been quite good to do warm rooms this winter in August. So you could find out early on, well, was there going to be provision in our area? What, would we, what do we need to find out about? Uh, and proactive content is where you start using local publicity, your contacts, and finding out what's coming up as well. So there's always two strands with pre-production to content. Are we being reactive? We just need to get something out. That's absolutely fine. Can we be proactive in future or proactive and bring in another episode uh, and so on and so forth? Okay, so pre-production, Sam and myself could sit with you quite easily and we could go through those questions in half an hour and you'd have a much clearer idea of what you wanted to produce. And now it's time for me to hand over to Sam because we're going to talk about production. So uh, Mark, if you could... Sam, it's your turn to take over, okay? And you're going to tell people about the equipment and the free equipment, and you're going to show audacity to people as well, aren't you? So, yes, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, what it is exactly you need to re record something and what you can do once you've got that. Um, I don't need any uh, fancy text on the screen here to tell you that the only thing you need to record your face is your phone. Your phone's got a wonderful microphone in it. If you've got a smartphone, chances are you can talk to someone very clearly and get a very decent recording out of it. Um, I won't be recommending any uh, specific apps uh, for recording here, simply because everyone's phone is different. Yeah, it, you want to look up what's good for yours. If your phone already comes with a recording facility, this is great. The other thing you can do is you can, of course, spend money and get yourself a USB microphone or your own mixing desks or so on. Some, something we can aid with. But, of course, we're doing this for free. Uh, well, we're trying to aim to achieve this for free of charge. Uh, so... The, we, we're going to stick with the mobile phone. So we record on the mobile phone. Next thing we're going to want to do is get it off of your phone, USB, Bluetooth, WhatsApp, Drop, Dropbox, whatever. Get it onto your computer. 
and we're going to talk about Audacity. Now, Audacity is a program for editing audio in. It's free, and it also comes with the downside of looking like this. Uh, Brad, please confirm we can see Audacity right now. I can see Audacity, Sam, yeah, and it looks Perfect. bamboozling as ever. <laughs> yes. So the <laughs> problem with uh, Audacity is that it is it is a grey box. However, we can use this grey box to our advantage. So one of the things uh, that's very handy in terms of audio content is being able to put out a 30-second advert, for example, something to be able to communicate to your direct audience, hey, we have an event coming up. Um, Brad, you were talking earlier about... Uh, da -da -da -da. This is a terrible time to forget her name. <laughs> Oh, Nazreen of Awakening Mind. Nazreen, thank you. Yep. She's amazing. Um, just can't believe I forgot her name in that moment. Uh, yeah, Nazreen getting uh, her message out to her audience as quick as that, that was done within the hour. Now, obviously, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but that's okay. Here's That's what we're here for. But for today, we're just going to look at a quick demonstration of very briefly setting it up for recording. Actually, you're going to record something, edit it, top, tail, compress, normalize. These are all just small parts of the process. Uh, importing music, exporting the whole thing, and then we'll talk about anything extra you can do later. <laughs> so within within five to ten minutes, <laughs> within five minutes, Brad, we're uh, currently online. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we are. I've been starting to type a little thing here. Uh, mm -hmm. gift, wrapped audio, gift wrapped audio outreach is a Suffolk based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcasts for free uh, or very little cost. How does that sound? Excellent. Uh, only thing we're missing contact information. Oh, yes. For more information, Please, please email Brad at orangerpodcast at gmail.com. Orangerpodcast at gmail.com. Perfect. We have our script, everybody. Mm -hmm. That is, when it comes to advertising these days, there's a lot of advertising heads who will try and tell you to overthink these things and uh, they'll make entire marketing strategies. They've maybe got a point. But the thing is, is, at this stage, we just want to think about who we're talking to and what's our aim here. And sometimes clear and concise is the best way to go. So we've got our script. I'll move that to the side. Audio setup. It's just right here now. Recording device, what I'm going to use to record. Oh, lovely microphone. Uh, your list will look a lot smaller because I'm an audio engineer. I have lots of things plugged in. Uh, so we're going to use my microphone. Go ooh, before I bring back the script. Now we're going to record this. We are now recording this. As you can see, my voice is now appearing on the screen. How lovely is that? So let's bring back our script. Give myself, give myself a couple of seconds silence so I know when I started recording. Gift Wrapped Audio Outreach is a Suffolk-based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcast for free or very little cost. For more information, please email brad at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. There we go. That read-through was okay. However, I can do better. You see, bring my chest up, bring my head up, make sure I've got a voice. Gift Wrapped Audio Outreach is a Suffolk-based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcast for free or very little cost. For more information, please email brad at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. And then to stop the recording, I just press the stop button. You see, this, this little transport bar up here is very similar to your old tape decks. You know, pause, play, stop, go back to the beginning, whatever. So... There isn't really that much, 
there's going to be a lot of relatable things in there which we can use to be like, all oh, right, that's what that's trying to say. So here's our recording. Uh, we need now need to cut out the extra content. Uh, I said I'd give myself a few seconds to find where the that would begin. So we can see here, dead space. So this must be my first attempt. Gift Wrapped Audio Outreach is a Suffolk-based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcast for free or very little cost. For more information, please email brad at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. There we go. Easy enough. So we know that's our first take. I'm going to highlight that, get rid of that. And I can see here's my second take. Get rid of that. And... There we go, yeah. And, of course, let's have a listen to our second take. Gift Wrapped Audio Outreach is a Suffolk-based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcast for free or very little cost. For more information, please email brad at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. All right, Brad, which, which uh, take did you prefer? I will go with the second one, Sam, and you've got three and a half minutes to show them the other things. So uh... Exactly. <laughs> so so I'm going to get rid of the first take. Uh, it's a little bit quiet. Let's make that uh, a bit louder. Normalizing. That's just another word for amplifying. Oh, great. We've got it. It's now noisier. We can use the inbuilt compressor to uh, even out the audio a little bit. Make it a little bit louder again. Double check that we haven't ruined the audio. Gift wrapped audio outreach is a Suffolk based project. Yep, that's all good. Uh, then we're going to use filter curve e EQ. I've already designed it so that it looks nice on me. Gift wrapped audio outreach is a Suffolk based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help. And we've edited the audio. It's as easy as that. Now, what if we want a bit of music underneath that? So I've grabbed some royalty-free music from Incomputech here. Uh, Incomputech, strictly speaking, not for commercial use, uh, but for presentation purposes, we're absolutely fine. So I'm just going to bring our audio in a little bit, uh, delete the amount of uh, music I don't want. Well, but if I play it right now, uh, everybody prepare your ears. This might be a bit noisy. Gift wrap. Audio outreach is a bit noisy. Don't like that. So we can do deal with this one or two ways. First way is we've got this little volume bar at the side, bring that down until it's at a comfortable level. However, I don't like doing that because we have more control if I bring it down like this, bring in a little fade, fade in here, click, click, and let's have a listen. Gift wrap audio outreach. Well, that's a bit noisy. Let's bring it down a little bit further. And this this is the part of editing that just takes a little bit of time. Is it's just a bit of an iterative process. However, it's clearly one which you can do fairly quickly. All right. Gift wrap audio outreach is a Suffolk based project run by Brad and Sam with the aim to help you produce your very own podcast for free or very little cost. For more information, please email Brad at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. And there we go. We've produced a tiny advert in less than 10 minutes. Yep. Can I come in there, Sam? Yeah, of course. Because Sam will talk about exporting as well, just briefly. But as you can see, that was Sam using three or four very simple techniques on Audacity. There are many, many others, and Sam is an expert on it. He's done he's done videos for 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 professionals as well. Um, so yeah, but you can see fairly quickly how you know with your phone um, and having your your you know, good quality phone and access to any any background sound if you want to to make it more professional you can create something in 10 minutes so we get a very simple message out a longer podcast obviously takes a bit more editing time and so on but we can come to that uh, later on okay so sam do you want to briefly talk about exporting uh yes so i can also see uh questions in the chat yeah. about letting us know where the free music library is uh I grabbed this from Incomputech or Kevin McLeod. 
this was just for demonstration purposes. Kevin McLeod has uh, very specific licenses. Mm -hmm. um, you can use things like freesound.org and there are other amazing places for you to be able to get the correct licensed music for you. And that is something we cover inside of our sessions. Yeah. Uh, so exporting. exporting exporting audio is very easy. We go to file, export audio, and we're doing this as an MP3. So I just select MP3, stereo for 44100, constant 320, entire project. And we're going to be naming this... Uh, GWAO quick advert export and because it's terrible habit to try and uh, show you what I've got instead I'm just going to have to be able to play it and hopefully you'll hear it gift wrapped audio outreach is a suffer based project run by Brad and there we go we have an advert. So thank you very much, Sam. That we were hoping to get, we were really crossing our fingers for, for days in advance that that was going to work. And, and it worked perfectly. So it, well done, Audacity, and, and well done, Zoom. Uh, and well done, yeah. CSC for that account. Zoom works. Uh, yes. Uh, Go on, Sam. So Mark, Mark has a question, uh, which I feel I can answer quickly. Yep, My podcast voice, uh, <laughs> I didn't have to work hard at that. Uh, I just had to uh, uh, practice opening up my diaphragm, relaxing your vocal cords and enjoying the process. I think we'll move on at that point, Sam. There we go. <laughs> go to the next slide, please, Mark, because um, we'll finish off now. Well, so, so you might have lots of questions. I hope you do. Um, but it's sort of a measure in success and ways to do so. And at the very top, uh, in not very bold font, it says simple metrics. The hosting sites we suggest would all generally offer insights, as they call it. Certainly SoundCloud does our regular one. And they keep a track, uh, usually in the first week, of the, um, the, the amount of clicks and the amount of downloads and so on. And they also tell you uh, regular users and where in the world as well. So even, even with free, and, and that's a free account of SoundCloud, the limitation is you can only upload so many um, sound files at a time, but it's more than adequate for, for the podcast because the, the Horinger podcast, we keep two months worth on and we, and we roll, scroll it on. And then we're not even using 50% of, of what we're allowed to use. And we also keep track of, and there they are for you to have a look. Some of the positive comments has been really good to get feedback from people. These are all people in our village. Uh, we've helped uh, promote all those events. My favorite one is actually the cricket one, where we, we interviewed the cricket team. They were running a, a, a kids' cricket thing on the weekend, and they had three people sign up the following night, and they closed their books on the weekend. So we're quite pleased with that. And we've supported all the charities, and they're just some. Um, we, we estimate that charities in our village have raised an extra £3,000 this year through, through the podcast. Um, so metrics are easy, and that's part of the sort of post-production and the follow-up. We would not be leaving you behind. Uh, there are things to follow up with after that. And if we can go to the final slide, Mark, um, just to recap, really, you know, what, what we are looking to offer people um, to help them get their message out free or as low a cost as possible. Training, Sam and I can take you through Audacity, not a problem at all or working with you and producing, either we would interview, be part of, of a production, editing, taking the, the, which is what Sam has just shown you, basically. And we'll show you about hosting with the sites, the best, uh, the best sites to host, the best free sites. And of course, um, legal and safeguarding. That, that idea of music is quite crucial. You know, you don't want somebody knocking your door saying um, you, you've broken a, um, a a copyright infringement and safeguarding as well. We're both DBS, we're both teachers. Sam's a TEFL teacher and I'm an ex teacher, and we both keep that going as well. So these are things we'd like to offer people. And, um, and I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you for your time. And if you've got any questions or answers, we'd love to respond uh, to you as best we can. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Brad and Sam. Uh, I think that was extremely, uh, quite engrossing, actually. Um, 
now it's an opportunity for um people to um uh ask their questions um and if anybody wants to put up their hand and come in please do i've got carrie hello carrie hello carrie hi hi thanks that was super super helpful um i just wanted to um I, I, I kind of hop on the back of the earlier question about the podcast perfecting the podcast voice because um Sam's voice was great. I uh, have quite a bit of experience in public speaking and so on, but I do notice when I tape an interview, my hums and haws and ands and ahs and so on. And I just wonder if there's anywhere, if you advise anywhere, you know, a little mini online course or something, or if it's just practice, because it is really irritating when you listen back to it. <laughs> well, that one, um, honest account, yeah. Yes. Thank you, oh, Carrie. That's such a good question. I think that was what was in my head when I posted that in the chat. Uh, Brad, Sam. Do you want to go first, Sam, or shall I? Yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, I think Sam said something earlier, which yeah, uh, cool. we perhaps re-emphasize that, about that voice. Yeah. Go on. So about that voice, like, Carrie, you brought up an excellent point about ums, ahs, and so on. And... The first thing I'd say to anyone who was coming to my radio station and trying to make a new show would be, don't worry about that. That makes you human. Mm. Uh, you see, I, I do it right now, even when I try to think about the next sentence. It's really important when we're doing that, though, that for us, for our voice to carry, even when we're not sure what the next word is going to be, force your shoulders back, get your diaphragm out. Make sure you are happy to just say, hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. However, if we're just enjoying saying words, then it's going to sound like you are the most engaged person here. Yeah. And that's just part of presentation. It, it is. Can, can I, and you're absolutely right, Sam. And these things will happen. Uh, so you, you mustn't worry. I, I take your point that sometimes it, it gets in the way. Sometimes you hear it too often. We get that. Um, as I've just done, you, you, you can't stop doing it. Now, to overcome that, you often need little words like now and those little little phrases you build into a, uh, a, a, into a script, which allow you to sort of instead, of, instead of going, um, you actually say a word instead. And that, that's force of habit and rehearsal. There's also an editing way as well, of course. Sometimes there's the, there's the long way of going through laboriously and, and, and deleting them. But I think there's a long, there's an easier way as well, isn't there, Sam, with um, uh, the volume uh, that is in a way in Audacity, you can delete some of those sounds. Not all. And I, I would recommend not having a pristine script. That sounds artificial. Um, so, so a blend of ums and ers doesn't go amiss at all. You are a human being and you are engaging with someone as well. So I wouldn't be frightened of them. And there are a number of ways around that. Thank you. Thanks. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank I you. think what you're Fantastic saying, question. Is, yeah, you're you're saying a com it's a conversation rather than you know how we can mm -hmm. because people get a little bit concerned what they're going to say. So you can prepare yeah. a script, but reading that on a podcast, you're, you're saying really doesn't work. Is that what you're? It is a conversation with a friend, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, where, where I am now, I have a picture of an old friend from from my. <laughs> looking very silly at my wedding day and it makes me smile and i and i, I talk to dave um, okay. and you know okay. uh, i won't describe what he looks like yeah. um, but and, and it's that idea that you are creating an intimate one-to-one -one discussion with a friend over a cup of coffee that they're listening to you and they're your friend and you want to engage them sorry sam i think you're going to say something oh yeah no I, i'd absolutely add to that that conversation is the perfect word for this you know, when you're creating a radio show, I tell DJs, you're telling a story here. What's your story? In podcasting, you're having a conversation. You you know your topic of conversation. When you're giving a speech, you know your topic. But no matter what, you're talking to an audience. And that's something we hearken on in our training, something uh, we want to make sure you feel comfortable with is that conversation. And not to stick on the question too long, but it was a really good question and one that comes up quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. And damn, I did just have a fe finishing point on that one, which was like <laughs> ties it all together. Oh, right. I know what it was. Carrie, you also asked about specific training. I'm afraid to say the answer is practice, but going over your previous speeches, 
hearing one thing you can improve on. Yeah. If there's one thing I want you all to take away from today is never ever go back and hear all of your mistakes. <laughs> Just one. Three good things, one improvement. I will... <laughs> you can tell he's a teacher, can't you? <laughs> um, anybody else want to make a comment or a question in, in, in the room at the moment? Mm -hmm. um, oh, feel free to, uh, uh, feel free to no, write, write questions in chat as well. Um, the questions about so, music, making music available. I think you've yeah. sort of dealt with that. It, um, yeah, it's worth having a good conversation about available. that. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Performing Rights Society quite rightly, you know, want to support musicians. So it, it is a good thing to to discuss. It's a wonderful thing to have music in the background. It really does lift the quality of what you're doing. But quite often, if you can't get music, quite often, uh, one of my one a number of my clips just have the sound of, of what we call ambient sound. So one was just traffic going by. And it runs underneath. Another one is a crowd in a bar just chatting. So music is great because you you, you can do interesting things with it. But ambient sound is equally powerful and quite a good way of introducing and closing out podcasts as well. It's almost like it's setting a scene. You know, we're here in a pub and slowly in the background, you've got the sound of people just chatting, having a drink. So you can play around with, with sound quite interestingly, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Colette, uh, Colette, you had a question about um, you know, when you're doing that recording, uh, does it delete as you over uh, overplay it? I think that yes. Was a, and, yes. And then I saw Sam went back and he highlighted it and deleted yeah. it. So it was answered. <laughs> <laughs> it was answered. Thank yeah. you. Do you think yeah, that this might um, work for you, Colette, with your with your work in South London and, and your community? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, it, it would be. A extremely valuable tool for me to utilize because I'm in the schools and I'm constantly doing the well-being workshops yeah. and I'm constantly working on you know creating visual awareness in the community as it relates to violence and young people and vulnerable families and victims so it's a conversation that is ongoing right now in London so yes this mm -hmm. would really make an impact i'm looking forward to learn a little bit more and maybe get some support with this yeah, after this meeting. I come in there actually yeah. and, and add one thing morning colette sorry not, not to, to yeah. cut across you there but actually working in schools and i'm about to go into my local primary for the first time in january and they want a podcasting club uh, which is a fantastic thing because it'll talk about life in the school but that sets up something more to do with the way you disseminate and, and uh, now for my case study, I've I've really used email addresses and Facebook because that's the that's generally been the age group that I've I've been dealing with, and people feel comfortable with that. But clearly, if you're working in schools, WhatsApp and Instagram become the default position. You would want to use those as well, and that's just an interesting part of the conversation. Is how do you set up a WhatsApp group for those people, and then how do they disseminate it, and so on? It's not difficult, but it's part of that audience reach and thinking about your audience and who you want to get the message to and the best way in which you can access that, that audience. So I'm going to be setting up somewhere along the line, a WhatsApp group with a primary school, which is fraught with all sorts of difficulties with GDPR and safeguarding, but the school want it and, and they'll do it and, we, and we'll discuss the ways to do it uh, legally and safely as well. So, so yeah, think about Do you think WhatsApp is the best way to disseminate? Are you saying that's the best or the easiest way to disseminate? Again, it depends on the audience. Um, and I'm, but, I, but generally, the feedback we tend to get is WhatsApp specifically gets named a lot as a way for the sort of 18 to 30, but actually you, anyone below 30, WhatsApp is the powerful tool. Whereas above that, you know, um, it's, it's an artificial line I'm drawing at the moment, but for an older age group, Facebook, and um, an email seems to be better. And certainly that works with my demographic at the moment, but it will change in January. That, yeah. uh, Malika has a question about probably, uh, Malika, look, you, you ask your question. I'm, I'm not very technical, um, although it did seem quite easy. I, 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 I deliver people's life stories which no. came out of um, my uncle who took his life. And when I went and just on a discovery road and researched, 
couple of things that I found was the subject's quite taboo and also that not not many people get the opportunity to share their life until you hear at the funeral when it's their um their eulogy. So I've been running this life story program on and off for some years. And that's what I'd like to use the podcast for is to share, is to, you know, um, interview people about their life stories. So I wondered if there was a, a further workshop for us to attend or would this just be it today? Uh, well, right, yeah, well, um, I, I, but I, you know, well, let's discuss that live. I mean, I think this was very much an introductory, um, um, you know, session um, to, you know, get uh, people get an understanding of that. Um, uh, Brad and um, Simon, we're going to we're going to repeat this for others um, mm -hmm. in March. But I think we wanted to see, you know, what be the inter what would be the interest from individuals and individual organisations to take this one step forward. And I think that. There was probably, um, you know, we haven't discussed this, um, and, um, and Brad, myself, but you know, I, I would have thought that there, there could be some individual work because um, I'm not sure it would work as a two or three groups doing it, um, Brad. But I'm, I'm looking at you a bit live on that. But yeah. I would have thought you could do individual work, maybe with Colette or maybe yes. with um, Malika or whatever it is on their project, yeah. help yeah. them at least start their first one up so yeah. that they. Yeah, go on. I'm, I'm so if I could, then um, yeah. Sam will guide me as well as this. But this is really part of the original plan, is that we would look to uh, work with you individually. So actually, one of the things I was I was intended to do. So uh, please don't think I'm going to be rude. I will follow up this with, with with through the mailing list and contact you and say if you're interested, please get back into us. So we don't want to lose touch. Um, that will be for, from our perspective. Sam's brilliant on the training side. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've thought about training as one arm that we could do with you and then you become independent. But the other arm is we produce with you and work with you so that we start on the early stages and away you go when you are ready to go. Now, the other thing I would say about that is because of the oral history in, in the Horinger podcast and something I do, which is entirely separate, I, I actually produce birthday radio shows for families um this is not a promotion for it but it ties in perfectly with what you're saying malika is that um the families record lovely messages and then and they you know and a song and we do steve Wright sunday love songs for the one particular family and and it has an amazing um response and you know, people do weep and cry uh and so i've got that experience as well of mixing the two together so that we can create stories you know like yours we could we could vary it in in other ways and so on and actually working one-to-one -one with you on that would be a, quite a privilege actually because it would tie in perfectly with what i call gift wrap radio so i will follow up uh, to all of you and you can feel free to ignore it obviously but likewise in, in six months time if you have an idea then then get back to us because we'll be looking to, to we'd love to work with you and the final thing is we're, we're just working with edinburgh interfaith good friends of mark's and um and they've just come online this morning and we're going to be working on some new podcasts with them as well. So I'll, I'll hold it there. But yes, is the simple answer. And, and would there be a fee or would it be free? Well, the plan is we're going to be doing it for free. We're setting up a, a community interest company with the idea that uh, so, so I've just got something in front of my screen at the moment. Um, so the idea is it would be free. If there might be a notional cost of like a 10 or 20 quid or something like that. There might be. But the idea yeah, is we're setting up the CIC with funding. Situational dependent. I'm going to come in on that one is situational dependent. It is about working with you and your organizations on a personal level and working with, you know, our, with, our, with our time and, until yeah. we're able to get the funding uh, prop properly set up as well. Because as I'm sure most of you are aware, CICs are not a an easy time to get running. <laughs> yeah, but we're not looking to rip anybody off. That's certainly no. not. Yeah. yeah, we are <laughs> here to support you in the best ways we can. Yeah. So, Sam said I, I just, I, if I just come in now, I mean, an ad that civil, at civil society consulting, we do have, uh, some new money available from a project that we're doing called Steps to Togetherness, and I'll send you a link about that. Um, and we want to share the good work that people are doing across the country with other with others across the country, and so that we can all be learning from each other. So 
we do have some money that we could probably put into this, Malika. But I think I think that we want to keep this as a community podcasting as an idea. We want to keep it low cost because you know it's like how can we do something at the grassroots how can we collect stories how can we disseminate those stories at a low cost and and i think that's kind of where we're in a sense trying to pitch it more generally i would say um so i think there's there's definitely scope for that i, I also wonder brad i mean obviously into edinburgh interfaith you've done uh, a podcast with us uh, francesca and myself yes uh, you you know you've done a, a around our work and i think you've also done one around tackling loneliness and interviewed some various yeah. organizations. I wonder if we can share those as examples yeah. when we, we mail everybody out. Um, um, I can send you links to those because uh, uh, one of the powerful things about the Coffee Club Morning, uh, I, it's, it's been really engaging ev for everyone I've been on, but I sat in on the loneliness ones. Um, some of you may have been there for those back in October and it's it inspired me because I, I was, I saw a, I saw a thread whereby clearly the, uh, many of these groups were choosing innovative activities and innovative spaces in which to support men and male loneliness. And so I've just put five together now, five 15, 20 minute podcasts, the grieving pint um, who are stars on, on that particular day, they deal with young males grief in pubs, but they do it in a very sympathetic way. Uh, an angling group, real minds who use sea fishing to work on males loneliness, Nordic walking, cycling, and uh, the men's sheds. And I'm about to interview a barber in North Wales who's about, who's just, just about to go on the Chris Evans show. Damn, he got there before me. Um, <laughs> and we'll have a series of podcasts going out in January, all on men's loneliness, promoting these groups, but how they use innovative spaces to um, support men. And we want to expand that as well. And that's what will come out of the coffee club. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, look, people are obviously having to to move on to the next yes of their day. Um, <laughs> are there any final comments or um, observations? Anybody that hasn't said anything would like to say anything? This was really useful for me, um, and I like the way you compared it from radio to a podcast. I've done quite a bit of stuff on on radio over the many years, and I'm really keen to explore the podcast route. Um, I don't know what the next arrangement is, but I'm um I'm also really keen to look at setting up my podcast for one, my the radio show for um people's live stories, but also I'd like to use a podcast for groups that I'm part of and to be able to get our events advertised and stuff. So they're the two things. I'm a director of one charity, a co-chair of another a vice of another and a patron of another. And so I'd love you're to see. So I'm busy. Yes, you're you're busy. so busy. <laughs> well, I, I can come in there because I a, tomorrow I will follow up anyway. So I'll be in touch tomorrow and then just get back with us and we'll just have okay. a one-to-one you know, -one Zoom. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. I'll take it there. I'm really Malika, are you to... still in, are you still Malika, are you still involved in Faith Forum for Faith Network for Manchester? Yeah. So I'm the co-chair of Faith Network for Manchester. I'm the director of a mindfulness network for people of colour. Oh, right. The patron of um, peace building schools based in London. And I'm the vice chair for One Spirit Interfaith Foundation. Brilliant. We'll, and we'll, so we'll, I'd we'll, like to yeah. use the podcast to advertise our events because hmm. I don't think our events are getting out there enough and... I've had a vision lately of looking at how I can use something different. And I think the podcast way sounds yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. just and what that's, and that's really what, Yeah. And that's really what we, you know, we touched on yeah. uh, in minds in Rochdale because I think, you know, they were using up a lot of energy trying yeah. to tell their, 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 their people yeah. that were using uh, yeah. about mental health and wellbeing for the Punjabi community. And, yeah. and, and and that was taking up a lot of their energy, you know, leaflets and emailing and that and everything. So I think that's the other way that we probably saw this as, as a way of communicating more more simply uh, to, to a lot of people and more easily. Um, to come back to your point. In an audible point. way, you know. In, yeah. in, in well, to come back to your point, just to finish off, it's capacity building. And, you know, we, we're here to take on the, and, you know, expand your capacity by doing this for you, either to make it easy for you uh, or train you or whatever. You know, it, it comes back yeah. to, to sustainability and it's this, you know, what CSE are doing, 
to make it easier for you. And that's that's the priority because really it's not about us. In a sense, it's not even about you. It's about the people at the other end of your chain yeah. that really need the support and how we can really make their lives better. So I mean, yeah. the other thing that we're looking to do, and I'm discussing this later in the week, I've got Celso here. I don't think Celso, are you able to come online? Um, so, so Oliveira, bon dia. Um, he's in Peterborough. Um, he, he's here, but he's not anyway. Celso, um, um oh, yeah, yes, sir. Hey, hey yes, Celso, sir. sorry, I wasn't trying to test you, see if you were there. Um, Celso works with the East Timorese uh, Community Association in Peterborough, and we're, yes, we're, yes. we're looking at doing a, an event, um, in person in Peterborough, I think on March the 7th. Um, um, I know you know it's not going to be suitable for everybody, but I mean I think perhaps we could have a you know an in a practical session, uh, Sam and and um, Brad. I haven't really yeah. Brad, well, you the laptop be, and a mic. Be there and working with groups yeah. and, and talking yeah. one to one or or, or doing yeah. that. So I think we might we might look at that being a possibility. Um, we could make that work. I think Sam, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else? Anybody else wants to say? Uh, Karen, uh, Paul, I've got still here. Uh, Rukshana, uh, Olympia. Um, if there's anything you want to say, otherwise I'll. And if any anybody wants to just stay, and have a little chat for a few minutes. I'm I'm here uh, for a little bit longer before I rush and get my coffee. Yeah, we've, we've, um, we've got a few minutes. Thank you, Rukshana. Um, I was going to say, is it um, is it Kevix, um, the the I don't know how to say Ke, I don't know how to say your name properly. So Ching Huang as well. We're talking in the chat. No. Um, I'd like to have a chat with you. Um, well, I, can I just say thank you to all those who've been and contributed? Yeah, yeah. This, this has grown our wildest expectations, I think, Sam. So we've really, I think we've really. There's a really good number of people and. Yeah. And I think a lot of yeah. a lot of yeah, thank you, Claire, and and thank you, Carrie, um, and uh, and and as I say, we'll, we'll, we will we um, will people have asked for the slides, people that have had, so I think we're happy to you know give them the slides, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, yeah, yeah, and um, I think um, we probably need to just have a conversation about some money and what you know what we can do. Um, to help some of the groups, you know, so they're not thinking, oh, well, is this going to be too much or whatever? Yeah. I think maybe, Brad, Sam, we can have a bit of a conversation. Yeah. It's going to be that. good to, you know, to scope out what's going to happen next, but, um, you, know, um, you know, we've got the time for that, yeah. Because we, we, I think I think maybe, you know, if we could say, you know, we can contribute to the costs of, you know, you working with a set number of groups that come from these sessions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think some of the groups will have a bit of money that they can pay you anyway, so it doesn't. Yeah. Um, we we, we have think, money in the bank at the moment anyway, so you know we're okay. Well, from look, stuff. I think you know going back to the, the the people that have come today, you know, in the email, it might be just you know because people sort of think, oh, this is great, great, I can do this, I can do this, but if they're going to do some individual work with you, I think they're probably thinking, well, how how much will that cost? And I think if we could. So sort of, if you could spell that out, um, because I think I think then I think people will want to contribute. I think it's the right. Oh, uh, Rukshan. Yeah. Yes. Um. Hi, everyone. This has just been so amazing and so insightful. So thank you once again. Um. So yeah, Mark. I think I really appreciate what you're uh, saying. A ballpark figure just to sort of manage expectations, yeah, just yeah. so we know what we can go back yeah, and yeah. ask for from our finance teams. Um. Yeah. Because uh, to be fair, I I work for an interfaith organisation called the feast um and we I, I represent the london team and we work with young people of all faiths and none um and getting them to really build on friendships and and speak about faith positively and and just share their identities and cultures and it's absolutely amazing and podcasting is something that i've really tried to break into so many times but i always get so scared with the huge costs attached to it and oh, okay. you know it, it does seem really scary but i feel like for the first time in a very long time it, you've actually really broken it down for me and i don't feel too scared now and i'm almost like actually yes. hey, you can do this um yeah. so yeah if you could just provide like a, a very manageable like a very realistic ballpark figure so we know what we're working with what we need to raise in terms of funds uh that yeah. would just be super useful okay. um yeah. so yeah thank yeah. you so um, thank you yeah uh, I, I think we'll we'll do that um 
So yeah, if if we, um, I think one of the things that I think is very important to point out here will be, you know, it will be with you and your projects on an individual basis here and the scope of the project. But Brad and I do offer, uh, was it one hour sessions we did or two hour sessions? Two hour, wasn't it? Yeah. Two hour sessions. Okay. And yeah, we had, we had a uh, set cost for those, which we'd be more than happy to provide a uh, few emails at horringerpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> Sam and myself will sit down and have a good think of this because we didn't realize it was going to be such a success. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, this is good. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> nice to be. I just, I just want to say thank you so much, um, Sam and Brad. I, I held on to the very last because I wanted not to miss anything. <laughs> oh, well, so I'm looking much. forward to moving, you know, to to, yeah. to begin. I'm the ready. I'm, I'm really ready because we have a lot to do. You know, next okay. May is very important for us. It's our 10th anniversary. We have lots planned right. um, with Mark getting involved as well. You know, we have two major days coming up. Um, for the borough. Oh, yeah, look, I mean, so, could you, look, could you, yeah, could you, collect? could you say a little bit more about that? Because it do, is very man. powerful, I think. And, yeah. and you've, you've got some dates set. Uh, we're collaborating yes. with Colette, um, on, on both of them. Um, and it's very much around well being. And um, yeah, know, Colette, it's, it's yeah, Colette, Colette, please. Be, I think we've got uh, quickly, let me just run through it. Uh, I, we just recent, uh, recently did a, a report. Um, to the, where I was commissioned by the Borough of Lusham to do a report on what more we can do to re reduce violence. And um, Mark and his team helped me, you know, I don't know what I would do without Mark with that project because it was a sudden one dropped on my plate and he was there, you know, coming to assist me. Um, yeah. I lost my son to knife crime when I moved here from Jamaica, five years after moving here. He died in our community saving another boy that was being attacked by a gang. He went in and he saved that boy. Um, that boy's now a dad with two boys. He turned up at the funeral on his bicycle to apologize to say it was him, you know, should be there, not my son. But what I did, I started this organization before the burial funeral because I realized that visuality wasn't in London when I moved here. And I was determined to get visuality out on the street. So that's when I started going to the credit union, getting a loan plaster in the street with posters that lit at night and bring awareness to this borough. So for the past 10 years, I've been doing enrichment workshop in the school with the police and also with various organizations and about consequences of carrying knives. My part of it is about the well-being part and, you know, handling the emotions, knowing when to walk away, recognizing triggers. So the workshop has been very, very productive and, you know, Lots of this year we've connected with over 4,000 young people. I've done over 30 school workshop deliveries. It's also done as a theater performance forum delivery as well, where I get the young people to take on the character of the person who is a gang member, what they could have done with the scenario differently. So I've been very, 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 very busy. So next May is our 10th anniversary. So I'm hoping to have a day healing in Lucian day we're still trying to come up with the, the name for it that will be may 24th that's the community part of it where we're going to have like different groups coming together and sharing what they do you know if they're victims what they've been doing what legacies exist bringing everybody together and then on the 31st of may it's going to be my one minute silence that was launched years ago where a petition the mayor of London, Sadi Khan, to recognize victims and what we, you know, what we go through every day in our waking moments, you know, for him to give us that one minute silence. Even though he didn't grant me it, the petition is still out there. And we have been still celebrating one minute silence for victims for London, as a matter of fact, for all over the world. <laughs> so we have the daisy flowers that we use, the yellow in the daisy, represent the sunrise every victim remember when they wake up every morning dear beloved the sunrise and the sunset the yellow they will not forget even when they close the eyes they will remember the white in the days is our angels that surround us and i've added the green this year in the pin and which signifies hope and prosperity for our future generation so we have the days of pin in sainsbury now 
they're supporting the visual awareness. And when we do the workshop in the school, the kids also get their days to paint aware. And when asked what this is about, it's about their well being, being aware of carrying knives at the age of 10, you can be arrested, know what happened when the police stop and search you, what your rights are. And I've recently launched, last year I've launched visual awareness in schools. This platform is for cultural recognition, diversity recognition of peacemaker, what it represents, what it means. I'm a Christian. So Jesus was crucified on the cross at a very young age. What is your religion? You're Buddhist. Who is your you know, significant peacemaker in your society? So this platform I'm trying to implement in school that children learn about being a peacemaker, learn how to forgive each other, learn how to get on, learn how to recognize when you're angry, and different tools to utilize to feel better. So that's the next bit. <laughs> now we did plus some other bits. I do sip and talk every month mm -hmm. with parents. So every month we meet, we have coffee, we got tea. We did the loneliness training with Mark, which I've also implemented in my sessions as well. I also have an online course that the, I've called it Happiness is Healing One-to-One. -one. So the platform I created, I call it W as in W. F as in father and C as in closure, my waking moments. And if I'm feeling sad, how do I follow through to feel better? And then closure, how do I end up, you know, each day? And that's how my book was manifested. So my book is used in the classroom to talk about realistic optimism. You know, how do you feel? Look around, lots going on, lots going on. But what do you appreciate in this moment? Be yeah. real about what's happening. So the book is used in that. Cause. So everything that I do, the workshop, I didn't plan it. It was just me waking up each day, asking myself, how am I feeling? And I do that up to this very morning. So yeah. I teach them the concept of recognizing their emotion on their waking moment. And then the course that I did, I did that during COVID. So that to connect with people, to help them. If they're feeling isolated, there is this place they can come. Right. And then I do little things that added to my day, like dancing flowers together, dancing lights together, all these little platforms that I have, you know, on Facebook. I have mother's memories. I have over 2000 um, followers now, you know, so I've been very, 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 very busy, very, very busy. And thank goodness for Mark. <laughs> He's there in the background <laughs> that, you know, tie me into these little workshop that motivates me <laughs> even more. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really I'll looking work. forward to this. <laughs> Do a lot. Yeah. So I yeah, so I, I think that's why we need a discussion, Sam and, and, and Brad, because I think, you know, particularly in, in the work that, that Colette's doing, you know, that we're you know, we've been very involved in. You know, we want to we wouldn't want cost to get in the way of doing a lot of podcasts around this because you can see the energy that this can create and could really yeah. lead to um the work that we're all doing as part of that well-being conference and and then you know the 10th anniversary um and actually the big that big campaign um and i think that you know you know we're we're nothing if we're not ambitious really but that big campaign that sits there um within the context of london but nationally around a uh, knife crime and you know getting the mayor and the mayoral candidates as a mayor london mayor's election um early may you know, so that the, the early part of next year is the time to sort of, if you're going to do things, it's it's then, you know, getting those candidates to sign up to that or getting Sadiq, who's the one of the candidates to really sign up to it is, it's it's kind of now or never in that way, I think, probably. So yeah. we'd want yeah. that to, we'd want to really be supporting that, I think. Yeah, um, I want to push it out. You know, Car I'm on the Lucian Safer Neighborhood Board now. I'm the vice chair on that board. And I'm trying to use that platform as well to get visual awareness out there. Because I sit on the committee that listen to the um, command center call, like when you call 999 and 101 call, I get to be one of the person that scrutinize the call as well, just to see how quickly they're handling the calls. So I'm also integrated in, you know, doing stuff for the community, vulnerable, you know, the vulnerable families that exist, give them a voice as so to speak you know so i'm i'm looking forward to to use whatever you know tools i have on my journey to bring awareness more awareness out there so i'm really looking forward to this guys okay 
Colette, I can't wait to, I'll, I'll be in touch tomorrow, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for everybody else. Um, uh, Rukshana, um, uh, it's also uh, Keshin, I don't know if I'm saying that right, if there's anything they wanted to say. No, thank you, just thank you. And thank you, Colette, for sharing your story, really inspiring, thank you. Yeah, and actually, you know, if you're, um, you know, we could hopefully a, a, a direct link up, obviously, with your your multi faith uh, interfaith hat on um, and the and the feast yeah. and to look up more about the feast and what you're doing there and and, and how we can can work uh, together going forward. Um, that would be terrific. Sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, really, really great. Look, um, well, I've got to go to another meeting actually, so I met better. In I've got eight minutes. Um, <laughs> um, Mark, Mark, you need to look after yourself. I, know. Look, I'm, I'm, I think that was, I think that was really so, so exciting and so well done. And I think, you know, if we could have a fl you know, lead to a flurry of kind of, you know, uh, community podcasting mm. work well, an email coming through now. It's just going. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to hear from all of you and hear what we can get up to because this is it. I didn't really get a chance to say this properly, but podcasting is an excellent opportunity for not only getting your voice out there, getting your story out there. It's just a wonderful avenue of not just therapy, but well-being. It is going to be, we we can provide that support and we will have individual conversations as and where needed to make sure we can give you that where needed. And Rukshana, earlier you were saying how you weren't feeling very confident in the idea that you weren't very like you were very put off by it right mm. and yeah that happened to me at the radio station all the time we'd have new people come in who wanted to try it out and but were overwhelmed by all the equipment and that is exactly what I worked with and was able to get so many people who were completely overwhelmed by it into a position where they could either record at home to make their radio show or podcast or they would be in the studio working with the equipment to get it to where they needed to be and yeah I very much look forward to getting an email from from you and Brad and see seeing where mm -hmm. this goes brilliant okay. thank you thank you so much everyone yeah thank you very much and God bless everybody. Lovely. And speak soon. Thank yeah. you. Take okay. care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.